let's talk about government spending. So there's one sector that the government spends a crap ton of money on that we could actually <laughs> unburden <laughs> by what has been if we were smart. And I think that Robert Kennedy and Donald Trump are setting themselves up to actually cut government spending by a lot. And let me explain what I mean by this. I've linked articles in the description about what I am saying because this is a very, very important topic to me as a healthcare worker uh, and as somebody who spends a lot of time focused on my own health and fitness. One of the biggest expenditures that we have as a country is healthcare. One of the articles that I've linked says that a trillion dollars a year of our, uh, of our spending goes to dealing with chronic disease. And that can be through the VA, through Medicare, through Medicaid, and so on. That number jumps to four and a half trillion um, when you include everything that goes in from those v, uh, uh, VA, Medicare, Medicaid, and then um, subsidies paid through other insurance companies and um, uh, mental health diagnoses. So that can include everything from PTSD to anxiety to ADHD and so on. Robert Kennedy has talked for quite some time about misdiagnoses of ADHD and the reasons that kids are being diagnosed at an alarming rate with autism and uh, other developmental delays and other th these sorts of chronic disabilities for kids. On the other hand, uh, rates of diabetes and uh, heart disease, effects of morbid obesity are up across the board and that includes children. Now why am I grouping all of this together? Well, because all of it stems from the same problem. It all comes from the environment that we live in and the food that we eat. It's much more popular for people to, you know, oh, I'm gonna grab pizza, it's Friday night and I don't wanna do anything. Well, you could cook, you know, chicken and broccoli for your family. You could, you know, grill out and steam some veggies. Well, yeah, but that takes a lot of effort and it's just so accessible to get this fast food and the additives that are in it are illegal in most countries because they're so bad for you. They're so carcinogenic. They're horrendous. Matter of fact, most people that even live quote unquote healthy lifestyles, you know, they go to the gym, they drink energy drinks like C4 and uh, Celsius and Alani, all of these things that they've, they're, they have carcinogens in them they're, and they all are sweetened with sucrose and you know it's just long term horrendous for your body and that rate of caffeine eventually drives up your blood pressure and uh, it can give you heart palpitations if you're you know consistently taking in six seven hundred milligrams of caffeine a day and people do that might sound excessive but people that go to the gym especially the ones that are in that phase of I'm gonna do two workouts daily they will take a full scoop of pre-workout, first workout and second workout, or they'll do a coffee and a pre-workout, or, you know, a couple espresso shots in the morning, get through class, you know, go to their, um, you know, go, go get, hit their workout after class and after work. And here they go, you know, hitting up the 400 milligram pre-workout, um, with all that caffeine in it. And then they can't sleep because the caffeine is stimulating their mind. And so their sleep quality is horrendous. The food that they're eating is highly processed. Let me tell you, protein bars, don't eat that garbage. Regular, just, just meat and eggs, man. That's where, that's where the quality pro and whey protein powder. Don't eat those, those protein bars that are ultra mega processed. Even protein powder to some degree, you gotta be careful with because some of that stuff is just ridiculously processed. But why am I bringing all this up? Well, because these chronic diseases that ail us, particularly the ones that involve the liver, kidneys, heart, and lungs are completely preventable, uh, by, diet and lifestyle changes and just overall uh, minding your environment, I'm going to say. The water that you drink, even if what your, uh, you know, the drinks that you have, you know, diet soda, zero calories, is still carcinogenic as all hell and is hard on your kidneys and your liver. If these changes are made, government spending will go down and inflation will go down. So there needs to be a massive push, and this is what I expect from RFK, is a massive push toward that healthy lifestyle. In fact, go watch a video of RFK working out. That guy, that guy is impressive, he's 70 years old, and just look at him. 
Additionally, I hope to see some more uh, better, not, not necessarily more, but better regulations on, uh, on environment in general from RFK. So including things like, uh, you know, regulating where waste is disposed of. How close to aquifers can you, you know, drill a, uh, uh, oh, why can't I think of the, the name? I mean, an oil well, obviously, but I'm trying to think of uh, um, how close can you put a refinery? How close can you put, um, why, why can't I think of the word? A quarry, a quarry, that's the word I'm looking for. All of these things that poison groundwater and uh, just the, the air around. I mean, the things that we can spray on our crops the dust that gets brought up into the air in places like Kansas because the farmers are idiots and have, have uh, well, I shouldn't say they're idiots. They've made really stupid decisions and torn out their hedgerows and so dust hangs in the air 24 seven. Um, that dust is contaminated, well, not only dust is bad enough, but that dust is contaminated with all kinds of chemicals are, are you know the the sprayers that go up and down the fields every single day i i've seen it firsthand and uh, my younger brother in fact my mom and dad had to move out of uh, we'd moved to the midwest temporarily and then they moved back to the pacific northwest because he couldn't breathe um, and i bring all this up because a lot of this stuff is in our control and that spending now this isn't something that's going to happen in five years this is actually and i mean this in the least callous way possible this is going to have to wait until the generation of people that are uh dealing with these heavily chronic diseases right now are dead and not dealing with those diseases because we have to take care of them right we can't just kick them to the curb but if everybody you know millennial and younger essentially you could you could change your life uh, in such a way that these chronic diseases as a generation, like as a herd, you know, uh, wouldn't be that big of a deal. And that, that would be our biggest expenditure cut to minimal. I hope that RFK is able to implement policies that will long-term save money, but I have a feeling that, uh, it's not going to be well received by even the people who support him. Um, they're going to say, leave me alone. Don't tell me how to live my life. And to some degree, I agree, but uh, actually to a great degree, I agree, but I would love to see public health and the health of children take center stage and be the topic that's on everybody's mind. I'm going to go to the gym now. That's about all.